Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat. Um, this is episode 745. The topic today, as it is Father's Day, is about dads and how that influences and impacts your relationships. It's going to be fun, trust me. Um, before I jump into that, though, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why this is happening, or why I do these talks, why it's happening. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't already know that. I am a best selling author, inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work and also what started these, started these talks over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 745, so just a few of these under my belt, and I'll tell you a bit where you can find the rest of these later on. Um, but because today is happy, it, because today is Father's Day, happy Father's Day to all those dads out there, I want to speak to about how dads impact, influence, challenge and override our relationships so we're gonna have some fun this can be interesting i'm, I'm gonna speak to women mostly there's a couple of bits there's one or two points for men that i had to learn myself so i'll speak about that as well so you get some reference points but the first thing i'll say is that how do i say this okay let me preface by saying this is not going to be everybody's experience but some of you some people watching this may go, oh, that's so mine. Then they go, then somebody may go, nothing to do with me. So just to be clear, what I'm saying lands for somebody. <laughs> and actually quite a lot of somebody, I would say. So first of all, one of the things I want to talk about is how for a lot of women, you may have noticed in your past relationship experiences that you're basically looking to marry someone, well, basically marry your father, some, marry somebody like your father, because you think that's the best choice. Now, I'll play with that a bit more in a moment, but I want to give you that seed to think about because for a lot of men, their focus has been to marry someone like their mother. In fact, I had a conversation with two friends today about how a lot of the men um, weren't growing up because really what they're looking for wasn't a wife, they're looking for a mother. That's one of the men's challenges. But anyway, that's, this is Father's Day, not Mother's Day. So let me talk about the father's side of things. So the first thing is that a lot of women are, have been raised without being told this but have subconsciously believed that the only sort of man they could be with is somebody like their father, which could be good, bad, or indifferent. And if you look back at your history, you may notice at least some traits, some behaviors, some framing, some ways of being that your past boyfriends or husbands or lovers reminded you of your father or vice versa. If that works for you, great, but for most it doesn't. One, because the challenge for some women is they never marry anybody because their father has been so raised in their, so in their esteem, unfairly and delusionally so, that they think the person can never measure up to that standard. Even though, reality speaking, their father probably never was that amazing as they seem to hold in their minds, in reality. Now, the desire is to be that, yes, I understand, but to hold that standard for any man that comes into your life to a standard higher than even your father achieved can be challenging if your father was so amazing. Now, for some of you I know, your father was less than amazing, challenging in fact, in fact, in some cases, painfully so. And I understand how that feels. And the thing about it though, is you may still also be aware of, you're attracting men that remind you of your father in the negative way too. And part of that is, um, well, part of it is, that is part of the work and I'll explain in a moment what that's about. But I have a couple of other points I wanna drop on the table to expand on this. Sorry, I'm just thinking I want to say this. So let me flip, switch to men for a second because I've got a point I want to come back to for, men, for women. I mentioned a lot for a lot of men that they're still almost wishing they could marry someone who reminds them of their mother, almost so they can be mothered by the woman because they don't have to grow up. I dated women like that where I was in that position myself. I didn't marry them, but I definitely dated women where I was, end up acting like, I end up creating it so they actually like mothers to me, which was not effective. And it was painfully upsetting for the relationship as well. It didn't work at all. And I know men have been that, a lot of men have been like that. Now, one of the pieces of work I studied, one of my teachers, David Data, talks about this in one of his books, and he's taught this, is for men, our job, our evolutionary edge, is to, as the, as the quotes from his book, chapter in his book, is to li he says, for men, we need to live as if our father is dead. And he means that energetically, um, sorry, metaphorically, not energetic, and metaphorically speaking, meaning that for many of us, and it's in the chapter, he talks about this, and by the way, this is a chapter from The Way of the Superior Man by David Data, which is D-E-I-D-A, you find it on Amazon. He talks about how we grow up oftentimes with a 
again, illusionary perspective of our fathers, where if we somehow um, exceed his what he achieved, like we make more money, get a bigger house, anything like that, somehow we'll shame him. So we hold back. So what we do as men sometimes is suppress our ability to live our freedom and don't challenge ourselves to go for our dreams and our goals because we did that, we might exceed what our fathers did. And that would somehow shame him, make him, make him look wrong. And there's this dichotomy inside of wanting to succeed, but not wanting to overachieve to exceed what our father had. So for some of you ladies out there with husbands or partners like this, you may understand what's going on. But the reality is for us as men to really be ourselves, we must follow our path, our calling, our purpose, which wherever that takes us, which in my case was really to not so much succeed beyond his dreams, but to grow beyond his understanding. That was where it changed for me. So when I speak to women for a second, there's almost, almost a parallel to that, is that ladies, oftentimes you need to live as if your father was no longer there to be free. And I don't mean to say get rid of him, I'm not talking about that, although in some cases I know you want to, in some cases you never want to, I understand, both ways. For many women out there, their father was this incredible male role model, again, that nobody could match up to. Especially because when you were looking up to him as a role model, you were four years old, and he was so massive, so powerful, so big, there's no man in reality who can match that energetically. So having, having views of reality is a key thing, but also to live a life and choose partnership that is nothing, um, sorry, that's not limited or constrained by the relationship you have with your father. So it's, in, it's like a similar way to what's about men living as if their father is dead. It's almost living as if your father did not influence you because he still does to a degree. So part of the challenge for, being, for women being free and able to love and choose what they want in partnership is to not only get clear of what you want, which is always a priority, but secondly, is to start detaching, unhooking, and releasing those, um, I say patterns in the sort of word, but the, it's almost like the, the, the recording tapes that are wired into you, the wiring you have from your father, the influence that he had on you. And again, the spectrum of what fathers were like for a lot of women went from amazing, nothing could be better than that, and nobody can match up to what he was like, to the worst man on the planet that you never want to see again, and you hope he died, on you, and you, maybe you never even saw him. Maybe, maybe you were raised in a family where you never met your birth, birth father, or maybe your mother and father got divorced very early, so you don't have any memory of him directly. There's a whole spectrum of what's out there, so I understand what I'm speaking to. It's not one answer for everything. I'm just giving you some interesting, ideally interesting, truths about how fathers influence you ladies in your relationship choices. And you influence them either by acting in accordance with that or by rebelling against that. It's the duality thing. It's the same thing for men, is that we either copied what our fathers did or we opposed it and repelled from it completely. There's an in between as well, but there's this, this range for men with fathers. That's true with women with fathers too. There's the, there's the be like them, to be, might somebody like them to mirror that relationship or to do something totally opposite because you don't want to deal with that. A lot of women I know, and some of you may be out there watching this, understand this, is that your fathers may be such that you said, I've never want to have anyone like that, so I'm going to go the exact opposite. Whatever, I want to meet somebody who's the extreme opposite of what my father was. Some women have done that. So, you know, hi Mary, you had a good dad in hindsight. Well, that's also a good thing too, is for a lot of you watching, having the ability to look back at your father <coughs> And seeing more clearly, because that's the other part about when you were looking at your father when you were three years old, you didn't really have a very good perspective on who he was. When you look back and see from an adult how he did the best he could do and did pretty well, that might in fact be very helpful. So yes, Mary, as you said, most fathers did, well, I would say no fathers got parenting training because most, especially at, well, up until maybe 30 years ago, most parents weren't getting education, support, and learning how to be better parents. Most parents didn't learn from their parents how to be parents. It was kind of like you, you, you wing it. Um, and yes, some were naturals. And there are definitely some fathers, especially nowadays, I'm seeing fathers who are much more um, capable, is the word to put it, and natural at being parents. But of course, the thing I've noticed is that some fathers are really good at being parents when the babies are zero to 18 months, but after that, they're not sure to do with it. And then also, there are also parent, uh, fathers who are great with their kids when the kids are five to 10, but not before and not after. So it's not, some fathers are not great fathers the whole way through, just some of the time. 
But again, as I was saying, to be free to make your own choices, so you're not being over, um, being, I want to say ridden with that, no, that's the one I call. So you're not being influenced, that's a better word, with what your father was like in your life, for or against relationship. You want to choose free of that, because either one of them is an extreme that's out of your control. And I'm, not, I'm offering you some suggestions about how you can be free. Actually, I haven't done that yet. I will offer you some suggestions on what you can do to be free of either copying or rejecting that in a way that gives you freedom. Because either one, again, is a trap. Or I want to say trap. It's a limitation. So once you become aware and you're understanding that your father's influence on you is influencing your dating choices and your relationship qualities and, and experiences, and you want to change that, There's a few things I'm just thinking there's more than one. So I was going to say one, then I was saying maybe a few. So there's a few things I can recommend. First of all, start to get start to get clear what that is. What is it that you're choosing a relationship now, and compared in parallel or opposition to your father's relationship with you, or your relationship to your father? Journal about it, write about it, get it down on paper so you can start seeing in black and white or whatever color pen you're using. Um, the contrast and what it is that parallels to you, you and your father that was working and what wasn't working. Because some will be, some won't be. For most of us, for most women and for most men, in relationship with our parents, there were pluses and minuses. Just that's where humanity is. We're not all great, not all all bad. Usually, there's extremes, but most of we're in between. So first of all, we'll make a list and get clear about what it is that you have um, in your relationships. And this is one way of doing it is for ladies is to look at your last few relationships, partners, marriages, relationships, lovers, however that was, and note the common threads, note the commonalities, things that were the same in all of them. When you've done that, look back at your father and your relationship with him and see how much of that matches. Or is it an opposite, extreme opposite? Either way. Because once you know what's going on, then you can change it. You know, there's a, st a statement from one of my uh, seminars years ago, which said that basically um, awareness is often curative. Or oh, sorry, simple awareness is often curative. Meaning that when you become aware of something, it no longer has impact on you. That happens some of the time, unfortunately not all the time. But some of the time that does happen. So when you become aware of your relationship with your father and how it was influencing your adult life, seeing it clearly might give you the freedom, might give you the understanding so you can let it go. For most people, though, it requires going a little bit deeper. And that's where I come in. <laughs> or somebody like me, not just me, me. But what, what I'm really getting at here is that some of that wiring, programming you have from your father is pain associated. Right. In fact, Mary, yes, you can't change what you can't, what you don't see. In fact, having the ability to look back with clear eyes, and to was it was it looking um, to realize to see with real eyes to see what was happening gives the opportunity to change it. But you need to see first because you can't change what you can't see. So you look back at your parents' your relationship as a model, and look back at your father's relationship with you, particularly. That will give you some um, navigation points, a map, as it were, of how things have been in your life from relationship with men, particularly. Because the relationship you have between you and your father and the relationship between your mother, father and your mother will have um, structural impact on the choices you make in your adult relationships. And so you change that. So I mentioned how to change that. So one is becoming aware of it to compare and contrast with what you do now with what happened back then. Secondly, is to, if you can do this yourself, great. For most people, this requires help. This is why I offer my services. Is to really go back to your childhood and to, in a way, reparent yourself to rewire the programming to talk to your younger self yes talk to your younger self i mentioned this last week i saw um this past week i saw rocket man and there's a piece in rocket man if you haven't seen the movie i recommend it. it's a wonderful movie but it, and it's a challenging movie too because there's some you know stuff about addiction and abuse and other, and and um mistaken love in there as well but there's a piece at the back end of the movie where the character of elton john in the movie basically taron edgerton's role basically i mean simplistically hugged his younger self it was, it was obviously a fantasy piece. But basically, he got to talk to his five-year-old self and hug him and make peace. And so that is the epitome, the um, illustration of how it works. Meaning that when you start to really get clear, first of all, by connecting with your younger self, your four, five, six-year-old, when you're around shit with your father, and seeing as an adult what your child was seeing, so you can actually talk to your younger self and give your younger self, give her the insight of your awareness of what you know now looking back so they can start seeing more clearly because when you do that, you're changing your wiring inside. 
that that connection of hug, the, the metaphorical hug between you and your younger self is a healing modality, a healing focus that will allow you to rearrange and re sort the programming that the younger self carries. And when you do that, then your perspective on choosing a relationship as an adult will completely change. It may not happen overnight, but it will change because what's happening is your um, programming that you're carrying now, your wiring that you're carrying now, will be changed because you've changed the original programming you had when you were younger. Um, so perception of past self warped. When you mean warped, if you mean you have a distorted view of how life was, maybe. But the thing is what happens as a five-year-old, because again, as three, four, five-year-olds, we don't have great filters to understand what's happening. So what we see is happening to the adults around us, we believe one, it's the law, it's the way it is, because they're the adults, they must know better. And secondly, we may not see why they're doing certain things. There are certain distorted ways that adults are with children because they don't know how to communicate their love cleanly. And so the kids of those, par those parents don't necessarily understand that's what's going on. And so to allow you to change the relationship with your younger self and the relationship between your younger self and the experiences she had when she was young is what changes your, your relationships as an adult and changes your choices as an adult. So you can be free to choose what you want. So I said at the beginning about how like men living as if their father is dead, for you to live without the influence of your father in your dating choices, that's what this is about. And it does require some deeper work for most of us. Some people it's easy. They're the, they're the brave, they're the lucky few. For most of us, and I had to go through this my own journey myself, was to really have a sense of um, rapport and connection to my younger self. So I could heal past programming, past wiring. And that's what I do with my clients. So I've been there, done that. So I know how it feels to really reintegrate. And so it's kind of a blend of Gestalt and LP that I use to really bring the parts together of you and your past self so you can honor, respect, and love each other and transform your relationship of love for yourself. And that transforms the, the relationship of, to love in the world so you make better choices. It seems anything else. Because that was the big piece I want to talk about because it's really fundamental in this journey. And if you have some incompletes with your father, Oh, this is the other piece, the other, the other piece. Another part you can do that is something you can do very easily, although I'm going to give you a caveat at the back end, um, is you can actually write a letter to him. If he's dead, it's fine. If he's alive, it's fine. To write the letter to your father, which you do not have to send. In fact, I recommend an option with this. If you wanted to vent about your father and you want to do that, you can do that as well. If you want to thank him, you can do that as well. It, any range in between is to write a letter to your father about love, about relationships, about your choices, about how they were choosing what he did. Whether it's positive, negative, or anything else, you can write that letter. And if you wish to, if it's something that you feel is loving and kind, you want to send to him, that's so be it if he's alive. If he's not, and you want to just deal with it another way, you can burn it. If you don't want to send it at all, and you want to do that, you can burn it too. It's, and when you do so, burn it in a way where you can actually send blessings and light through that as a way of letting go of the past. So that's another one. So awareness first, journaling working with somebody like myself who can help you with healing that partial relationship with your younger self so you can become in rapport and basically reparent in a way yourself and then the the letter writing which can be a way of freeing up the energy that usually happens at the end by the way because when you write the letter you're not doing it from the place of judging you're doing it from the place of freedom again when you get free you can make better choices in your relationships i hope this is making sense I and mean, this is this is a fundamental piece of the work i do but i figure since it's father's day i'd bring it out because one of the things we deal with is is women they work with a lot of times it's a relationship with their father that is impacting negatively their relationship choices as an adult so this is a short explainer cliff notes version of what i do so you have a sense of what's going on if you're interested in finding out more i'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me which will be a free conversation between you and me where i'll give you some tips and guidance and you can ask questions and if you want to work, find out about working with me you can do that um but you've already got stuff to work with already i definitely recommend to write, do some journaling on what I just suggested. And also if you want to write the letter, you can do that too. Although I do recommend if you've got a lot of stuff in the way and you want to really transform your experience, let's talk first. I hope this is making sense. This is, this is fundamental stuff and it's big stuff I know. So I know for a Sunday, this is a bit more uh, rich and challenging, but for some of you are going, this is what I've been waiting to hear. So I hope it's been of help to you. This is my daily Facebook Live, in case you haven't seen it before. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, except tomorrow. I have a change coming, I'll let you know about that in a moment. So you can find my, my broadcast on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Replays go onto my business page and other places too, but my business page on Facebook at barryselby.author, where you definitely can find them. So you'd like that page and you'll see them when they get posted. And also I put them onto YouTube on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, 
please uh, subscribe to that channel. That'd be great. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all of these live. So again, 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. Tomorrow I'm going to be at a movie screening, so I won't do it probably till a lot after. So tomorrow's broadcast will probably be late. I don't think I'll do it before. So just watch my page. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, somewhere on here is a button that says to be notified when I go live. Click on that. So when I do go live tomorrow, which will be probably, I don't know, maybe 9 or 10 o'clock tomorrow night, you can watch it then. And you can also watch the replays. Um, any comments, questions you post in the com uh, If you want to ask any questions, you can do that below. And I'll, I'll respond when I sign off. And uh, I think that's everything. I appreciate you being with me, and I hope this has been of help to you. I do have a passion about this, about helping you be free to choose what you want in love, life, and relationships. And I hope this has made some sense. Um, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, a little bit later, as I mentioned. And uh, ask yourself the question How is my relationship with my father? And is it what I wanted? Do we want more? Those sort of things will get you started. So with that, I thank you for watching. As I said, I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.